did you know that before starting allopurinol, there is a genetic test that you need to talk to your doctor about. Let's get into it. Welcome everybody to the Healthy Joints, Healthy Lifestyle Show. And I'm your host, Dr. Aminola Dada. And I want us to dive into an important topic that could save life and lives, and that is allopurinol. So allopurinol is a medication that's used to treat gout. And the way that allopurinol works is that it blocks the ability of um, your purine breakdown to form that uric acid. So it basically blocks uric acid synthesis, right? So um, if you, it blocks uric acid synthesis, it blocks it using um, by blocking a particular enzyme, xanthine oxide. So it blocks that enzyme and it prevents it from forming uric acid, which is great for people that have too much uric acid, which is great for people with gout. But there are certain things that you need to understand when your doctor is starting you on allopurinol. So here's how it works. Usually allopurinol is started at a very low dose, like 100 milligrams a day, and then the dose is gradually increased. And the goal your doctor has is to get that uric acid less than 6 milligrams per DL. And the maximum they can go to is about, depending on kidney functions, it can go all the way up to 600 or even more. I tend not to use those very high doses because we have alternatives. Now, the HLA B5801, that is a genetic marker that has been identified and once your doctor tests it, it determines if you are at risk for having a severe reaction to allopurinol. So, what is this reaction that we're talking about? Well, this reaction can be something called Stevens-Johnson syndrome. And for those people not in the medical skin, in the medical field, it's actually a very severe reaction that basically is almost like a burn on your skin. And so it's one of the most severe reactions that people can have when they're taking allopurinol. And it's been found that anybody who carries this gene called HLA-B5801, it has been strongly linked to the development of these serious side effects. So, um, other side effects, other side effects associated with is the Stevens-Johnson syndrome. One, something called toxic epidermal necrolysis sounds just as bad, and a drug reaction with eosinophilia. All of these allergic reactions usually manifest on your skin, and so we can have peeling of the skin, basically like a burn. So all these hypersensitivity reactions to allopurinol can be it can be identified if you are at risk for them. So these are these are very serious side effects, and so getting this genetic test can be very helpful to identify who has the gene. If you have the gene, you're at risk. And, you know, genes usually come in pairs, but this gene is so, it's called co-dominant, which is that once you're a carrier or you have both, you're still at risk. So it's, it's a simple test. Your doctor will order it, order the genetic test, and find out if you're at risk for it. Um, there are certain people that are higher risk, certain um, cultures um, that are certain populations that are higher risk for having this gene and so probably should be tested in most of these people. So I'm going to tell you who these are. One, the Han Chinese, that's about 15%. Koreans, about 12%. Thai, people from a Thai heritage, African-Americans or blacks, period, um, are the highest risk people. But when we start to think about the fact that we are becoming more of a potpourri, uh, then I would recommend that most people that are going to get allopurinol get tested. There are certain people at higher risk, but if you have anybody else, any other kind of race kind of mixed up in your genetic lineage, then maybe it's worth getting it tested. But definitely the Chinese, Korean, Thai, and Black people should be getting this genetic test done. And just because the reactions can be so severe and one test can get it done. So what does American College of Rheumatology have to say? They're like, Get the test done before starting allopurinol in Asian people or black people, pretty much.
Okay. And then if a test is positive, then American College of Rheumatology says, hey, do not use the medication and consider an alternative. The alternative is <coughs> excuse me, you loric or something called febuxostat. And your doctor already knows that they always want to start a low dose. You know, and then I think the big thing then is also the cost. You know, what's the cost of the medication? Mm. In the United States, most of it gets covered by your insurance, but if not, then <coughs> some people say, well, you know, if you're at a higher ethnicity risk, then maybe maybe you um maybe there's a more of a cost benefit. Uh, but then because the risk of the reaction is so high, I think it makes sense to get this genetic test. So the test is called an HLA B5801. And you should talk to your doctor about getting this before starting allopurinol. So I hope this video is helpful. Like it, share it, give it a thumbs up, and I hope to see you next visit. Oh, by the way, we are going to add a downloadable checklist at the, bottom, at the end of this episode so that you can download it and use it when you're talking to your doctor. I hope this is helpful, everybody. Take care and see you next time.